Welcome back to Questions for Corbett. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and you can tell things are getting serious when there are not one but two editions of the Questions for Corbett podcast in a single week. But things are getting serious out there, and there are a lot of questions that need to be answered, so here's another one of them. This one comes in via email from Diane, who writes... After watching a Ron Paul segment on YouTube on protests against coronavirus lockdowns, I did a search using Google and DuckDuckGo, and very few articles came up about protests against lockdowns. The few articles that did come up framed protesters as anti-lockdown conspiracy theorists. Are there any protests against these lockdowns anywhere that you are aware of? Thank you for the question, Diane, and there is a rather simple answer to this question, and that answer is yes, there are many protests taking place even as I speak all around the globe. On the north side of the State House, by the entrance to the State Room, the chants of protesters could be heard loud and clear. Open Ohio now! Open Watching on TV, the protesters' message wasn't clear, but you may have been able to hear something going on. One of those voices outside the State House belongs to Jennifer Franz. We feel like the virus is um, less of a danger to us than our rights being stripped from us. I don't think anybody's going to agree to a vaccine or. A lot of frustration out here on the streets. They wanted gridlock and they are getting it. Cars as far as the eye can see. We're seeing a lot of signs out here as well that say impeach dimwit, meaning Governor Whitmer, the guy with the cardboard sign. Usually I'm at work right now. A lot of people who are out of work are up here. Our community is struggling. My husband is on unemployment for the first time in our life. And it's unwillingly that we're taking unemployment. We want to go back to work. We have employees. We have paychecks to issue. We have bills to pay. The only stores open are Walmart? That's ridiculous. That's why we're here. A number of Vancouverites aren't drinking the Kool-Aid. And they're getting out and they're getting together here to show the world that we're not okay with unlawful or for orders and, and quarantines and lockdowns. day here. It's a, be a shame to just sit at home and let the government tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Getting a lot of support too from cars driving by. Yep. Not everybody drank the Kool-Aid. It's good to see. <laughs> 20,000 Pakistanis are stuck in the UAE. They have reportedly registered with the Pakistani consulate on the 3rd of April to be able to return to Pakistan but have so far received no response. And that is why they chose to take to the streets today, flouting the social distancing guidelines. The big story that we're tracking for you this evening, those are images that we're getting to you from the Bandra station in Mumbai, where protesters have gathered. These are migrant labor, we're given to understand, who gathered to protest against the extension of the lockdowns. Yes, there are protests happening all around the globe, even as I speak. They are happening across the United States, in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Germany, in India, in other places besides. These protests are happening. So the fact that someone like Diane even has to ask about this speaks to the more underlying problem, which is that the gatekeepers of access to information online, like Google, and increasingly, like DuckDuckGo, who I will note parenthetically, has been getting worse and worse with its search results, I've noticed in recent months, so that it is becoming a Google Lite, much like StartPage.com became a Google Lite a year or two ago. Uh, it is slipping down that path. So the gatekeepers of online information 
are directing people who would be interested in such information towards mainstream sources that, of course, are going to portray this as crazy anti-lockdown conspiracy theorists who are killing grandma by daring to go out in public without a mask, not observing proper social distancing rules. Uh, this is, of course, the way this information is going to be framed in the mainstream, so no surprise that you are not hearing about this at all there, or to the extent that you are, it is generally by masked reporters who are afraid to go anywhere near these filthy protesters. So if you do want actual information about what is happening with these protests, you are of course going to have to turn to online independent sources of information. Like, uh, if you're looking for information specifically in the US context, I will note that Dell Bigtree the High Wire has been highlighting some of these protests on uh, his YouTube channel, uh, so restreaming some other people's streams of the protests that are taking place in Ohio and Michigan. Or, uh, for example, uh, I recently was a guest on something called Defending Utah Radio. They've recently talked to Idaho Representative Heather Scott about the lockdown happening there and the unconstitutionality of that. Um, so that link will be in the show notes if you're interested in that conversation. Or, Diane, as you point out, yes, Daniel McAdams and Ron Paul, previous guests here on The Corbett Report, were recently talking about this very phenomenon on the Ron Paul Liberty Report in a segment on the people waking up coronavirus lockdown sparking nationwide protests. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, the co-host. Daniel, good to see you. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? Doing good, because good. I think we can find a few positive things today. Yes. We're, we can. We talk about a few negatives. We usually search for the you know, the best things, yeah. the positive things, and we occasionally find one today. I think I think we can say maybe the, the ice has been broken and they're breaking out and people are getting tired of it and they're being tired of lockdown and maybe it wasn't a good idea. So that's um, that to me is good news. And uh, there's now demonstrations that people are speaking out. And the reason I like this is there's a saying and I endorse the saying is that no matter how authoritarian a government that one has, uh, the people have to endorse it. You know, once the people reject it, uh, you know, the government goes. Sometimes it's slow and tedious, but even the ones that are installed, they get the people's support. And right now, uh, the authoritarianism that we've been living with and uh, all the excesses in our financial system and the medical system, uh, people have tolerated it and they like it. And they're still, most people still probably think, yeah, all we have have to do is tinker with the management, but it's also people that we're seeing now in the streets are saying, you know, boy, this is enough. Uh, this lockdown doesn't sound American to, to us. And they're going out on the streets and demonstrating. And um, I'm all for that as long as it's peaceful. Yeah. But it, it, it annoys the authorities because they don't want us out of our house. Yeah. <laughs> how can uh -huh. you demonstrate if you have to stay? How can you demonstrate if you're not allowed to have more than a couple people together? That's you can idea. hardly get your grocery <laughs> shopping done. Uh -huh. So it is a challenge, but I think the people are tired of it. And and I think they're starting to speak out. I think it's going to grow by leaps and bounds because I think that is the natural thing to happen. As always, the link to that full conversation will be in the show notes in case you want to check it out. But suffice it to say that, yes, there are protests taking place all around the world right now. Yes, people are pushing back in many places even as I speak. And it is important once again to reflect on the fact that there are still people out there who haven't even heard about this, and the, some of the people who have, have only heard about it from mainstream controlled sources that are trying to frame this as crazy conspiracy theorists. The reason why the first order of the psychological operation that is played out against the public is to convince you that you are all alone is because the real truth, the ground truth that they desperately do not want you to think about is that they need your compliance to make this happen. This is an exceptionally important point. This is the reason why so much time, effort, attention, and energy is directed into propagandizing the public on various things. It is because what you think, what you believe, influences the way you act and what you are or are not willing to accept. You control reality. You control your reality. This is 
an exceptionally important subject, and it is the reason why propaganda even exists, is to try to convince you you're all alone, you're a fringe wingnut conspiracy theorist, everyone's laughing at you, and if you go step outside your house, you will A, die of COVID-19 immediately, and B, be snitched upon and set up by, by your neighbors and set upon by the jackbooted thugs of the police state. So resistance is futile. Stay at home. <laughs> and literally, <laughs> I mean, they couldn't make it any more blatant. The propaganda campaign slogan for this is stay at home, literally. So yes, that's exactly what they want you to do. And the the way to, to defy this, the way to end the lockdown is not some occult mystery. It's not, it's not going to require some sort of 18-dimensional chess. It's not going to be some big plan that's going to, okay, well, first we need to do this, second we need to... No, you end the lockdown because the lockdown only happens because of compliance, because people comply with it, because people go along with it. Uh, this is not a difficult point. In fact, it was put uh, in, recently, Jeff Berwick had an, a video up, share this now, and we can end the lockdown by tomorrow morning, where yes, the lockdown is taking place in our minds, and if we go outside, we have ended the lockdown. This is not rocket science, people. And uh, so, yes, I understand people who are concerned about their safety, not necessarily because of COVID-19, but hey, maybe there are people who are concerned about that. So take whatever precautions you want. Um, but for people who want to go outside, go outside. And yes, I understand that you may be subject to the snitches of the, the neighborhood uh, snitch state and the jackbooted thugs of the police state if you do so in defiance of government orders, if you dare to try to open your business during this lockdown. So there are there is strength in numbers, and that's why it's important to know about these protests that are taking place so that you can have that strength in numbers. And if there is no protest taking place in your area, people are looking to, to me, James, why don't you be a leader and tell me what to do? Okay, I, I, okay, you know what? I'm not a leader. I am not your leader, but I'm going to tell you what to do if for the people out there who need to be told what to do. And I actually, I have this kicking around. I've had this uh, sitting here for a couple of months now because I was planning on doing a Vote Harder video um, to parody the 2020 selection circus back before the world changed forever. But uh, I, I've decided I'm going to use this as a badge. I'm going to give you this badge to each and every person watching this video. You have now been imagined. Here, is, here it is. You have your, your medal. You are now officially appointed the leader of your area. You are the resistance leader in your area, whether that area be your house, your community, your neighborhood, your uh, city, your county, your state, your country, whatever it is. You are now the leader. You personally, I've just passed the baton. You now are the leader of the resistance. You are now empowered to end the lockdown by going outside. And you can do that with people. You can do it by yourself. You can open your business. You've just been empowered by a leader who has told you what to do. So now you are free to go and do it, right? <laughs> anyway, whatever it takes. Um, the lockdown only exists because people comply with it. And I hate to tell people, but mass disobedience, mass non-compliance is going to be necessary in order to combat tyranny. It's going to happen sooner or later the only problem being, if it happens much later, then unfortunately it will not be able to happen at all because, as you may have noticed, the police state is locking down right now. They are putting every single bar of this prison into place right now. And as each bar gets slotted into place, and then it gets harder and harder. Here comes the surveillance and tracking, and here comes the immunity passports, and here comes the mandatory vaccinations, and here comes the cashless society. It's all coming down. The bars are coming down, shutting in your prison. If you do not disobey, then there will be a time when you cannot disobey. So keep that in mind, and keep in mind the fundamental underlying point of this question. Are, is anybody protesting? Yes, people are protesting and you don't know about it because they don't want you to know about it. So first of all, please do not get your information at least solely from mainstream sources. Please look for online alternative sources. I've just pointed out a few. There are many more out there. I'm sure helpful people can suggest more in the comment section of this uh, report. And secondarily, yes, the lockdown exists in your mind, and you have to start disobeying at some point. That's the message for today. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.